All right, good day. I got my jigs back. As you can see, we are starting the bunny windows. Got my friends watching. So what we're gonna do here, we, tra we already traced out where we're gonna cut and we're gonna make a new bottom jig. You can see I got both pieces of wood here. So we're gonna put a hole right, right in the center where we want the air to flow out. Because uh, I do have other jigs for blowing bubbles, but they're just too small. So we're gonna pop a hole right through both pieces of wood. That's gonna show me where to put the air valve on the bottom piece. And then we're gonna cut out the top piece, and then we're gonna go get the plexiglass and start working on that. So uh, we'll do some cutting, let's go. All right, we got it all cut out, we went through, we sanded all the edges. I know in the last bubble video I actually routered the edges, but there's really no need because it doesn't even really blow in like the bubble doesn't start till it's like a half inch in. So sanding is just fine. Me, because these windows are not symmetrical, I'm going to go through and label. Like I know I want my ear to point forward. So this is going to be the passenger side. And then when I go to blow it, I'm going to have to flip it over. So on the driver's side, this ear will face forward. So I'm just going to put down driver. Now we're going to cut some plexiglass and get ready to blow. Okay, so continuing on. We already have a jig, as you can see. Problem is, this jig is just a little bit too small. So, rather than build a whole new one, we're just going to attach this wood right to the top of it. So, just to play it safe, because moisture's your enemy here, I'm sure everyone has a couple of these laying around. So, we're just going to throw a mask on here. Just flatten her out. Throw the wood on here. Make sure we're lined up in the hole. And just screw this together. And then our template will be complete. All right, once you got this all screwed down, you're gonna wanna put some sort of a gasketing material on it. Now me, I use a product called Low E. It's like an eighth inch silver reflective insulation. Works really good as a gasket material. And all you gotta do is just tack it in place. You know, just cut a hole. Here's where your air is gonna flow out. Just a couple staples. This all gets sandwiched together. And now we're ready to lay down our plexiglass. All right, so due to some poor lighting because it's dark out, we gotta move inside. So. You got your jig all set up. You got your uh, gasketing material on it. Now we're ready for the plexiglass. And yep, it's fluorescent pink. So we're just gonna lay this down on here. We're gonna take our template. Now what I did was I went and I pre-drilled holes on the outside of everywhere where I'm gonna be screwing it in. You know, you have about an inch for the gasket, so you want to go on the outside of that in case you screw up. Now here you want to be really careful and drill slowly. Don't rush it. You want to drill like, you know, I'm going to drill like a hole here, hole here, and a hole here and put some screws in just so this doesn't move. Because then I'm going to go back and drill. I'm going to drill every hole out. I'm going to take the wood off, clean it all up because there's going to be all sorts of little, uh, little debris from the acrylic. And then I'm going to put a screw in every hole and just lock it into place. And then we're going to be ready for some heat. All right, something else very, very important that I cannot stress enough. Do not put a screw directly through the plexiglass until you pre-drill. Otherwise, you will crack it. This is only 8th inch plexiglass. In case you're wondering, I got it off of Amazon. I think it was like 63 bucks which was kind of expensive compared to like smoke or clear, but I really wanted the pink. I think it's gonna look good. So when you drill this, you only wanna go just through the plexiglass. You don't wanna go any further because I mean, you put your screw in, you're just going into a dead hole. So just do it slow and once it falls through, you're done.
And when you hear it pop, you're done. And just pull it out. Rinse and repeat. Okay, so it's pushing midnight here on the Jersey Shore. So uh, we're going to wait until tomorrow to blow this. As you can see, we're all screwed in. She is ready to go. Heat and air, and we'll be good. But in the meantime, I'm going to show you how we do the frame here. So basically, you know, now me, since uh, I'm doing two opposite sides and my ear is going to face forward, I had to make sure that I was going to be welding on the right side. So that's my driver side. This is going to be my passenger side. So when this goes on, yeah, it's going to be facing forward, this tip. So basically, you're just going to line this up, make sure it's perfect. Go through with a Sharpie, scroll this out, and that's going to show you exactly where we're going to be putting the bungs. And in our case, we're going to be using riv nuts or rivet nuts, whatever you want to call them. Nice, simple, effective, and they work. As you can see, this side is already all done. So, I'll show you how we do it. I'll show you one or two, and then oh, you'll get it from there. As you can see, I'm gonna be doing about six at a time because uh, I only have six of these clamps. So you're gonna take your little rib nut, set it down exactly where you need it, I'm not sure how well you can see, but the hole is pretty damn well perfect. So you're going to end up getting these exactly where you need them. So, I'm going to throw the camera on the mount. We're going to get to tacking. You only need about four tacks per bung. You know, four or five, whatever you're comfortable with. But the more you put, the more sanding you're going to have to do. So, just keep that in mind. Let's get to it. Bought it. All right, you get the idea. All right, real quick tip. When you get all your bungs welded in place, which I didn't, I ran out. Got to get four more. Do yourself a favor and just kind of uh, use a bolt as a thread chaser. Put it all the way in. Just kind of get any slag or whatever might be in there out. And then just, you know, Kind of torque down on it. Make sure it's tight. Then take it out. Because the last thing you want to do is get this all done. And then have one of these bungs break off. Especially after you're all painted. Ask me how I know. Okay, next day. And we are ready to blow. But first thing that you want to do. Make sure you empty the tank. Get any moisture out of there. Yeah. We're kind of just heating this up. You can feel it's hot. You don't want to get any, any little residue to get it to come up out of there. So we're just going to take this, slap it on there, and we're going to wait 10 minutes. So let's go. right there and as we leave it on it's gonna cool itself down not gonna lie a little scared with this corner almost puncturing it but looks like it'll be all right we'll see when we put the plate on we might have to bend the plate a little bit out because I don't want to crack that 
But yeah, she's warm, but solid. All right, we're gonna let this cool and get back to this. So after you let this thing cool down, then you can go ahead and unpack it. Now after you blow the bubble, I recommend letting it sit for like 20 minutes or so. Just get up to room temperature. What's happened to me before in the past, I pulled this off like three or four minutes after I was done blowing it and like one side will cup. So you wanna make sure that everything is set where it's gonna be, make sure it's not warm at all, and then go ahead and unwrap it. All right, now that we got this far, we're basically gonna lay it down and just kind of center it up. You know, I kind of used my fingers, made sure everything was pretty symmetrical on both sides. You know, it's about a thumb's length all the way around. So I'm pretty happy with it, laid it down, hit it with a Sharpie, and basically just came out with all my holes and where I'm gonna need to cut it. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill all my holes first because cutting it can be a real bitch and drilling it, that's when you're gonna crack it if anywhere. So if I happen to crack it, at least I didn't waste all the time cutting it all out. So we're gonna uh, start small and work our way up with the holes. And you just wanna cut these slowly. You do not wanna crack it once you get this far. All right, so once you get the pilot, hole it, pilot holes in, I recommend using one of these step bits. You grab these at Harbor Freight. Get yourself a brand new one. And just go slow. Take your time. When we get to the end, just drop it out. Don't try to pull it back. When we get to this stage, now we're going to cut it. Myself, I'm just going to be using a regular little Dremel with a cutoff wheel. Wear glasses, these things shatter, and cutting this, wear a mask, because this is kind of messy. So, let's go. Here we are, we're all done. Uh, like I was saying, I don't, I'm not really a big fan of this color. So I think we're gonna change it out. I'm not even sure what color we're gonna paint the van yet. So the windows, I got these down. I could make new ones in probably an hour. I mean, the hard part's done. I already have the jig, template. All it is just a matter of ordering a $60 piece of uh, plexiglass. So guys, thanks for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, and tell your friends. Remember way back when when I told you guys to go really slow when drilling? Yeah. Good thing I really didn't like this color. See what I mean about the orange? Ugh. Fucking horrible. <laughs>